Hey guys, it's Heather from the TEC at Ori Georgetown Technical College. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a new quiz, set all of the properties and restrictions on it, create a random folder, and import questions. So let's begin. I am already in my course, and I'm on the quizzes page. To create a new test, we want to click on New Quiz. And then we're given a list of options here. You can see that the um, all the tabs along the top will step by through these one by one. But basically you need to enter a name for this test. And just keeping with what I have before, I'm going to name it Test 3. If you want to add a category, you can do that by clicking Add Category here. Um, some people like to organize these between tests and ex uh, final exam or quizzes or practice tests. So you can create those categories here to keep it organized. If you don't, then the system will organize them by the date that they are set. So uh, that's up to you as personal preference. And then the grade item, you can link it to the grade book. And I don't have a grade item created for a test three, so I'm going to go ahead and add a grade item. And what this does is it opens up a box where I can add the grade item to the test to the grade book by giving it the name and applying it to the category if I have one for tests. Applying the max points, I want it to be choosing whether this score can exceed 100 points or not and um, if there's a rubric linking it to that. So going over the grade book settings, we can do that and we'll do that in a future video. But uh, you can set all of that stuff up under the add a grade item. So here now it is linked to the grade book and that item's in our grade book. I want to allow auto exportation of the grades to the grade book. So um, all that means is once this quiz attempt has been graded, it will put the grade in the grade book for me. And then I also want to be sure I'm checking automatic grade, which is, tells the system to automatically grade the student's attempt upon completion. Um, if you have a rubric set up, you can link it to the rubric here. Again, that will be in another video. The rubrics and competencies video will go over that. And then we have some optional advanced settings. And the only thing under the optional advanced, as you can see here, um, if we expand that, you have allow hints. If you've set up hints and you want to allow hints, be sure you check that box. Disabling the right click, which is not checked by default. A lot of people like to do that to keep students from being able to right click on the screen and copy and paste stuff. And then disabling the pager alerts and messages while in the quiz will disable the notifications from the pager tool here. And then you have the option of adding some descriptions or introductions to the quiz and you want to be sure you're choosing that that is on if you set that up. And then you can also do page header and footer, which is not something that is typically used. So I have the choice of clicking save and close, which will close out of the quiz, or if I just click save, it'll save all of those changes. Or if I click on the restrictions tab, if I go from tab to tab like this, it will automatically save those changes for me. It is good practice to be sure you're clicking the save button at the bottom often though, just so you do not lose any of your changes. So now we're on the restrictions tab and you can see by default that the status is set to inactive versus active. And what that means is you can see the test and be able to edit it and manage it, but the students will not see it listed under the quizzes page until you've set this to active. Once you set that to active, you want to be sure that you have your start and end date set so the student cannot access the quiz anytime they want to. Um, if this is not set, then when they come into quizzes, they can go into that quiz anytime. It will not lock them out. So if you have a start and date range that you want them to take the quiz, you would just set the start date and choose the start date and then um, check for has end date and set the end date. So I want to take I want them to take it by Friday, so they have a, a full day to take this test. And then if you want to display it in calendar, you can display in calendar right there. 
Additional release conditions, this can be used if you want them to submit something to a Dropbox assignment or a discussion board before they can access the quiz. You can set up that additional release condition here. And the way that you do that would be create and attach and then you choose the item that you want them to be able to finish before they can post. And like I said, like a submission to a Dropbox. And then that will provide a list of the Dropbox items that you have and click create. Ori Georgetown Tech has Respondus Lockdown Browser installed in our testing in our testing centers and in many of our computer labs. So if you're going to be giving the test in one of those two places, you can choose to require this quiz be taken with the Respondus Lockdown Browser. And what that does is it locks the quiz down so they can only go in through the Respondus Lockdown Browser take the test and then they can close out of that. They cannot log in through Internet Explorer or Firefox. And Respondus Lockdown Browser actually locks down the whole computer so they can't open up other search windows, they can't have a chat thing open, they can't be emailing back and forth with somebody. Um, we only provide support for this through the college campus. It is not available for home use, so if your students are going to be taking their quiz at home, you want to make sure that that is not checked. Under advanced, ad, excuse me, optional advanced restrictions, you want to set a password on the quiz. So if they're going to the testing center, you can set the password to whatever you want here, and you would just give that password to the testing center um, proctor, and they could type that in for them. Or if you want to allow them to take the test during class time, and you don't, if they aren't in class, you don't want them to get into the test. You can set the password here. When they come into class, you give them the password. So only if they're in the class, they will have the password to get in. And then the time limit by default is set to 120 minutes. Depending on how long your quiz is, you can change this time limit. Uh, good practice is as long as the questions aren't too long, 30 seconds per question is like a multiple choice or true false is usually long enough to set that time limit to. So if you have you know, 10 questions, you would just do 30 seconds per question for the total time limit. Um, and then you can also enforce the time limit and show the clock so they can keep a track of how far into the test they are with their time limit. And then the grace period is actually in addition to this time limit. So they actually have 120 minutes plus a five minute grace period before that submission is flagged as late. The other thing you want to be sure you're setting is the late submissions and late submission this default setting allow normal submission just means that the student will be able to submit the quiz past this time limit and not be marked against it it will just the system will just show you that that was submitted late if you have used a late limit of one minute if they exceed this time limit over a minute then it will give them a zero it will save what they answered but their quiz will be marked with a zero you can change this to um, up to 120 minutes too so the other one that is used most often is auto submit attempt and what that means is they have 120 minutes plus the five minutes and then they have to submit their attempt. They can't answer anything else, they can't save their questions, so they just have to be sure that they are saving their questions as they move through the test. Anything they've saved up to that point will be marked as graded, anything they try to save after that point will not be counted. Um, anytime they try to go and save a question it will tell them you have to go submit your quiz. And then advanced availability is used for students who maybe have a learning disability or miss the quiz. You can set up their access under advanced availability. So they have longer time to take the quiz or um, if the quiz is already closed for the rest of the class, you can open it back up for one student by using this advanced availability. Moving on to attempts. Attempts is just that. It's how many times can they take this quiz. And the default is set to one. If you have a practice exam and you want to allow them unlimited attempts or a syllabus quiz, or if you want to allow them 10 attempts, you can come in here and set that. And then you can also tell the system which of those attempts grades to take or average. 
Objectives deals with competencies and rubrics, which we didn't set up in here. Um, submission view is going to be the view of the quiz after the student has taken it. So when they go and hit submit, this is what they see. The default is they only see their final score. They don't see any questions that they got right or wrong. If you want to change that, you can click on default view. Um, and then you can change to yes, show questions, choose if you want to see them incorrectly or correctly. And then if you want the students to see the correct answers, you would check the show question answers. Um, if you want to show class statistics, you can do that there. The score you want to be sure is checked because that's what tells them they made 98 out of 100 or 50 out of 100 on that test. That's what the score is. So clicking save and then um, you can also set up an additional view and set a date on that. So if you wanted to wait until everybody's already taken the quiz, you could set the additional view up and just put the date for the day after the quiz and then change these settings to this so the quiz is already finished they can go back in and see what questions they got right and wrong with the answers. Report setup is another tab that we don't really use. Um, you can create a report to pull statistic information but I'll show you another tab that actually gives you that information without setting up the report. And then layout questions. This is going to be where you can pull in the questions from the question library, create your random folder, and um, manage the questions that are on the test. I'm actually going to stop this video here. So in the next video, we'll, we will go over how to import those questions from the question library, create the random folder, and um, set up the points value for this test. So um, be sure to watch our future videos. Thanks. Bye.